Yo, guys, welcome back to another video. This is a reaction to terrifying space events that will happen in your lifetime. And I mean, yeah, I'm going to enjoy this one. I like space videos. I'm getting back into them, which is fun. Suggest me some more as well, because I do want to do some more just reactions. I don't want to just do top 10 facts about space. I want to like do just the reactions that I used to do before, but obviously I've done quite a lot now. So if there's other videos out there that, that you think I'd enjoy, please suggest it, because I, again, I just love doing these reactions, really. But... Let's jump into this, hopefully you're going to enjoy. Links are in the description to my Patreon. If you're interested in seeing more reactions of mine that get blocked on YouTube, I just don't post there. Just extra reactions, pretty much. Same for my Instagram, my Twitter, if you're interested in that. If you want to follow me, whatever. But yeah, let's jump into this and see things that are going to happen in our lifetime. Astronomical occurrences like eclipses, supernovas, and even meteor showers are all possible in your lifetime. And with a set of binoculars, a modest telescope, or even the naked eye, you can observe a variety of celestial events, which includes the next supernova that is bound to happen in the next 50 years. The last supernova that was discovered three decades ago outside our galaxy had the power of a hundred million suns. God, damn. These astronomical shows of your life are not something you should miss. So, get your telescopes and calendars ready as we present to you the biggest astronomical shows that will happen in your lifetime. From okay. a flyby asteroid, to meteor showers, to the extremely special death of a star. Let's get started. Let's hope you're actually telling the truth, mate. The total Come on now. solar eclipse. August Bro, I've always wanted to experience this. Because I, I always hear like, oh, there's an eclipse. Obviously, I say always. Sometimes I'll hear like there's a there's like an eclipse or whatever, but like it doesn't go dark. But like, is there different types of eclipses? There's not, is there? Maybe I'm thinking of something different then. But like I've never actually experienced it when it's like this. I know it's rare, and I don't know if there's like a place where like if there's a part of the world or the Earth where it happens most. I guess not because it just it's literally just luck, not luck, but it's not a guaranteed spot. It's just when the Earth's spinning and then the moon covers the sun. But, I've never experienced this. I think it would be one of the coolest things to experience. Obviously, I feel like people have probably gone blind from it because you're looking at it and then suddenly the sun just pokes out again. But I would love to experience it. It'd be so weird, like, in the middle of a hot day and then the moon just covers the sun. So hopefully he's going to say it's going to happen in Norwich in June, not June, July um, the 2nd, 2022. And I'm going to experience this tomorrow, no, the day after tomorrow. The 2nd, 2027. Oh God, not, Those not that soon. Born with wanderlust should mark their calendars for August second, twenty twenty-seven, in order not to miss out on seeing the best of what our world has to offer. It's crazy they can predict yes, what day it's going to be in five years. But once word gets out about this once-in-a-lifetime event, tens of thousands will be trying to get to the Valley of the Kings, Luxor, Egypt, to gaze skyward at twelve. Okay, so I don't always hear that it's going to happen then, because it is that rare. But is there not, is there like, there's other eclipses, right? I swear I hear that there's, there's, just, I don't know what is, am I just hearing things? I swear I've heard like eclipses that are happening like every so often, but I'm like wondering, wait, why is it not gone fully dark then? I'm, I know I'm thinking of something else, but I don't know what it's called. 12.02 p.m. local time. The instant the moon... Wait, they've even predicted the time it's going to happen. That's ridiculous. How they can literally do that when it's in five years' time. What the hell? Blocks out the sun and casts a moon shadow over the Earth will begin at that exact moment and last for an incredible six minutes six and minutes. 23 seconds. It's the only moment you can see the sun's outer, hotter, ice-white corona and the view is bookended by spectacular diamond rings created by beads of light streaming through the moon's mountains and valleys. This century's longest total solar eclipse will take place on August 2nd, 2027 for those who are in the path of totality That's pretty that cool, day. though. Although Imagine a clear eclipse it. occurred in 2009, it occurred over the ocean and was mostly obscured by clouds. The total oh, wow. solar eclipse in 2027 will be the longest totality on land since 1991 and until 2186. But you're not going to know if it's going to be cloudy or not, though. I mean, you can't predict that, so hopefully it's not. You travelled all that way and then, boom, it's a cloudy day. Again, it's Egypt, though, so 
I mean, I guess it's not going to be cloudy because that's just, the weather there is just brutal. Hot as hell. Number four, near Earth flyby of the oh, asteroid no. Apophis, not April thirteenth, twenty twenty-nine. Apophis is a three and a half football field-sized asteroid that will pass between Jeez. the Moon and Earth on April thirteenth, twenty twenty-nine. The asteroid, found in 2004, generated some concern and was temporarily classified as a potentially hazardous object. When it was initially identified, astronomers estimated that the asteroid had a 27% chance of colliding with Earth. Fortunately, yeah. NASA has determined that Apophis will miss Earth by 31,300 kilometers. I hope they're right. I hope they're right, because goddamn flipping hell. I mean, it's in space. Surely it could, like, ricochet off something, and then boom, it's going to crash into us now. But it will still be the closest asteroid flyby in history. Jeez. It may also provide an excellent opportunity for further investigation. I wonder if we'll see the it. The asteroid was originally given the designation 2004 MN4, but following additional study, it was given the permanent number 00042 and the name Apophis by its discoverers. The name Apophis comes from the Greek version of Apep, a demon from Egyptian mythology who was Ra's arch enemy. However, as ominous as that seems, it's possible that's not the major basis for the name. Co-discoverers Dave Tholan and Roy Tucker, according to a 2005 report in Astronomy magazine, were major fans of Stargate SG-1, a science fiction TV series whose most prominent adversary was named Apophis. How horrible would it be if Apophis struck? It would be awful albeit the exact degree is unknown because it would depend on the makeup of the asteroid. Even the best calculations show how disastrous it would be. It's coming this when close the year to 2029 us. arrives, God, along with Apophis, the scientific community will launch a big thorough observing campaign. Some of the large telescopes now under construction will be operational by 2029. We still have a lot to learn about asteroids, and when one gets this close, it's a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. Asteroids will always be a threat to Earth, and the more we learn about them, the more prepared we will be to deal with them. Number three, the Leonid Shit. meteor Me your shower? Me what? Oh no, this sounds even scarier. Meteor showers, the debris left behind by comets as they pass by, cause the Earth to travel across their path. The Leonid meteor shower occurs as the Earth travels through the Temple Tuttle comet's orbit. The Leonids have a long history of causing storming. The Leonid shower of November 1833 was approximately 200 years ago, and it was the first big meteor storm of contemporary times. That well-known shower had a significant impact on the scientific study of meteors. It's one of the reasons the Leonids are so well known. Meteors were assumed to be atmospheric phenomena like rain or snow before the 1833 Leonid storm. In 1865, astronomers discovered a comet that was named after its discoverers, Comet Temple Tuttle. The orbit of the comet around the sun was discovered to be roughly 33 years long. In November 1866, some prophesied that another Leonid meteor storm would occur, and it did. As a result, the Leonid meteor shower of 1833 contributed to the discovery that meteors in yearly showers originate in comets. Every year, Earth passes the orbital path of Comet Temple Tuttle, as we now know. The yearly Leonid shower is caused by debris from this comet burning up in the Earth's upper atmosphere. A Leonid storm appears only when the comet is close by. The last great Leonid meteor storm occurred in 1966, when millions of people across North America witnessed 100,000 shooting stars per hour. Oh, wow. Because meteors in yearly showers, such as the Leonids, all originate from a single radiant point in our sky, some witness of the shower in 1966 observed 
that the impression of Earth's movement through space was so powerful that they almost needed to grip the ground. Since then, the Leonids have put on numerous spectacular shows, but none have compared to the one in 1966. It takes the comet slightly over 33 years to complete its orbit around the Sun. The closest it came to our Sun was on February the 28th, 1998, when it was at the perihelion. Precipitation for this celestial body is set for November 20th, 2031. As a result, the next Leonid storm won't arrive for some time. That'd be cool Number to two, witness, man. Halley's Comet, midway 2061 I've to 2062. I've definitely heard about this one before. So I will be 60 years old at this point. The renowned comet named after the astronomer Edmund Haley only comes by Earth once every 76 years. Its sightings have frequently played a surprising impact on historical events. There have been many theories as to what comets mean throughout history, ranging from divine omens to atmospheric abnormalities to celestial wanderers. Early observers were both fascinated and terrified by Halley's Comet. The appearance of a celestial visitor was thought to be a bad omen and it was linked to everything from a king's death to natural disasters. All of that began to change in 1705 when Edmund Halley, an English astronomer, published his Synopsis Astronomia Cometicae. New ideas on the origin of three comets that appeared in 1531, 1607, and 1682 were discovered by Halley utilizing Sir Isaac Newton's gravitational theories. The comet orbited the Sun once every 76 years, according to Halley, and he predicted that it would reappear in late 1758 or early 1759. In the end, Halley was proven correct on all counts. Even though he died in 1742, his comet appeared in the sky on Christmas Eve 1758. How did he manage to like, guess that? Like, back In these days, now it must be flipping... I can't imagine how hard it is. Back when it was like this long ago, how are you even predicting things like this? It's ridiculous, man. It's crazy. Exactly on time. Wow. It was hailed as a triumph of scientific reasoning and Newtonian physics when it was discovered. Comet 1P slash Halley, as it is officially known, may have been flying through the solar system for up to 200,000 years, according to scientists. The Jeez. Halley's Comet was only observed a couple of times by Edmund Halley, but other researchers have mapped out its prior appearances and unearthed historical allusions stretching back to the ancient world. Also, the comet may have found its way into artwork. It is reported that Italian artist Giotto painted Halley's Comet as the Star of Bethlehem in his painting Adoration of the Magi when he Man. saw it in 1301. For the first time, astronomers were able to investigate Halley's most recent visit in 1986 with advanced technology. From Earth, high-powered telescopes were aimed at the comet and five unmanned space probes, known as the Halley Armada, flew by it during its transit. One of them, the European Space Agency's Giotto, got as close as 370 miles to the nucleus of the comet. For the first time, probes returned high-quality photographs that shed light on Halley, including concluding that its core is a solid mass made up of dust and ice. These pictures However, are there is still plenty of time before the famous comet returns to the inner solar system in July 2061. Thus, no space agency has yet declared plans for a follow-up mission. Number one, a supernova explosion. That's got a lot of history for a, a thing in space. I mean, a lot of history with humans and stuff. There's a lot of backstory to that. Stars that have reached the end of their lives explode in a spectacular display of light known as a supernova. During this collapse, the star's outer layers are ejected, becoming a black hole. Stars die in different ways depending on their mass. Our Sun, for example, lacks sufficient mass to erupt as a supernova. 
Though the news for Earth still isn't good, because once the sun runs out of its nuclear fuel, potentially in a couple of billion years, it will inflate into a red giant that will likely annihilate our world before gradually cooling into a white dwarf. Our sun will never be able to produce the amount of energy a supernova produces in its entire lifetime. According to NASA, the largest explosion that takes place in space is a supernova. Long before the telescope was invented in the 17th century, various civilizations recorded supernovae. RCW 86, discovered by Chinese astronomers in AD 185, is the oldest known supernova. According to their records, this guest star was visible in the sky for eight months. What the According to European Space Agency research, a supernova occurs on average once every 50 years in a galaxy the size of our Milky Way. This indicates that a star bursts somewhere in the cosmos every 10 seconds or so. Outside of our galaxy. Fuck? That makes you realize how big it is. Oh my day. <laughs> At least you realize how big space is. I mean, we know that, but it's just crazy. Every 10 seconds, the sun's exploded, and that just baffles See, me. The last supernova was God discovered damn. three decades ago. It blazed with the brightness of 100 million suns and was one of the brightest exploding stars in 400 years. It is predicted that the next supernova will occur in our galaxy within the next 50 years, according Jeez. to researchers at Ohio State University. There's a 20% chance it'll be seen without a telescope. Otherwise, a telescope will be required. Holy Thanks. shit, man. Space reactions. I need to do more, man. I've missed them. The last time we had that huge meteor shower in 1966, we didn't have tons of satellites orbiting Earth. Next time we will. Should be interesting to see how many are taken out. I feel like the star dying and being... And a being dying are visually the same if we could see that energy leave our body leave our bodies at death. Our souls explode and rapidly expand and our consciousness begins exploring in its new form. Like a black hole ever inwardly looking in absorb that's a bit deep, man. A bit deep for the morning. Um I remember seeing the total eclipse in twenty seventeen, that shit was amazing. So I'm confused. I guess there is different eclipses. I want to see like a proper one, like when it just goes completely dark. I guess there's ones where it's like it's not the same. I don't know. I don't know. But yeah, hopefully you enjoyed this reaction. If you want more of these space ones, I'll be down to do them and bring them back. But yeah, until next time, like, subscribe. Peace.